On this week's Gadget Show Web TV, John's making sure his data's extra safe. Otis checks out Nokia's latest racing game, and I bring you this week's best tech news. Hello and welcome to this week's Web TV. Right, coming up, Otis creates some real-life racetracks with the help from Nokia's latest mobile game called OviMaps Racing. But first, John was keen to expand on his backing up your data piece from last Monday's show with the help of the multi-hard drive storage system from Data Robotics. It's called the Drobo and it's all in aid of keeping your precious data extra safe. While we were researching our item on backing up your data for the main show recently, one of the products we came across that impressed us the most was this, the Drobo. Basically, it's an alternative to an external hard drive. Instead, what it does is operate a load of internal SATA drives together as if they were one drive. Your computer just sees them as one. All you have to do, open it up, slot the SATA drives into the slots provided, power it up, and it does the work of operating the drives together for you. This is an entry-level model which has four drive slots and can take a maximum of 16 terabytes worth of drives. Now, what's the advantages of this arrangement? Well, obviously the internal drives are very, very slightly cheaper than external hard drives. It's also flexible so that you can swap drives in and out as your data collection grows. You've also only got one box, one connector and one power supply. However, the most important advantage is that your data is safer with the Drobo because what it in effect does is act like a sort of RAID system, which means if one of those drives fails, your data is already protected across the other drives. So overall, it's much safer. I found it very easy to set up on a Windows 7 laptop. It recognized the drive instantly and operated it as one rather than the separate ones. The only problem I did find was that uh, it gave the maximum available size as the volume size rather than the real available space, which uh, I'd set the volume size at two terabytes. So what I did do was also install Drobo's own dashboard, which gives you a very good graphical representation of your Drobo. I got a 80 gigabyte drive, a 320 gigabyte drive, a 500 gigabyte drive. It calculated my available space as just under 400 gigabytes. The rough rule of thumb is it gives you the amount of space of the two smaller drives added together. The lights on the front tell you what it's up to. Um, if one of the green lights uh, goes red, you should pay attention because that means one of the drives has failed and you won't have that double backup. There are blue lights along the bottom which tell you if you're running out of space. I haven't used very much space on this, so uh, none of them are lit at the moment. It also works across uh, Linux, Macs and PCs, and that's a good thing. And if you do run out of space, it's very easy to add another drive. You don't need to switch it off or anything. It can all be done while it's running. Pop it in and uh, it'll start to recognize it. Take a little while. There we are, I've got a terabyte down at the bottom and uh, a total amount of space of just over 800 gigabytes. It's not all good news entirely. I mean, this basic model doesn't uh, have an eSATA connection, which is slightly disappointing. And uh, just occasionally there's a, a bit of fan noise, which you need to bear in mind if you are operating it in a very quiet environment. Overall, though, I think it's a very elegant and flexible solution to the ongoing nightmare of data backup. Right, news time now, and with the announcement of game streaming service OnLive heading to US shores soon, it looks like Amazon also wants a piece of the gaming market by releasing their very own download service similar to Valve Steam. Obviously, downloading has become big business for the online retailer, who currently offers MP3s, videos, and eBooks for its Kindle e-reader. So it really is a logical step to add video games to its list of content. But Amazon aren't currently commenting on these rumors, but I'd be really surprised if this one didn't turn into a reality. Next, Philips has just joined a wealth of manufacturers to release a Freeview HD box to coincide with the multi-regional switch-on of Freeview HD. The HD PVR is designed by Pace, but branded by Philips and labelled as the HDT8520HD and boasts a 500GB hard drive. 
This means that it has the ability to store up to 125 hours worth of HD content, includes 1080p HD upscaling and has USB and Ethernet ports for enhanced connectivity. There is also the option to live pause TV with an impressive three hour buffer limit. As well as the recorder, Philips will also introduce a slimline receiver, which will offer up Freeview HD but without the recording capabilities. Both models are due for release in the UK at some point in April, with a starting price of just under £160 for the receiver and just under £300 for the recorder. There is a wealth of mobile phone games on the market with everything from Street Fighter to first-person shooters, so it can be hard to keep on top of it all. But when Nokia announced Obby Maps Racing, it looked as if it was paving the way for something new. So we gave it to Otis to check it out. Ovi Maps Racing is the first location-based mobile game for Nokia. Now, basically what it does is it uses actual map data from Navtech and the inbuilt GPS capabilities of your phone. It allows you to race around your favorite streets in your local area without having to worry about breaking the law or basically being busted by the police. Now, you can program uh, any course you like. So you can actually plot a course from outside your doorstep all around the town, village or city uh, that you live in. So if you've got a route to work that you've always fancied, you know, putting your foot down on and going really quickly through, uh, you can actually do it legally, virtually. Yeah, you can also um, race offline on any of the courses that come preloaded with the game, or you can choose to race around any of the most popular 20 tracks based on cities all over the world, uh, Amsterdam, London, and Berlin, to name just a few. Designing your own course is simple. You move the cursor around the streets which you want incorporated into your course. Left, right, up, down, it's as simple as that. Done. Right, I'm gonna take one of my cars for a spin. You've got a choice of three cars. I'm going to choose <laughs> the Mancini 395 Coupe. Okay, ready to race. Let's go. You navigate simply just by utilizing the uh, multi-touch screen facility on the phone. Oh, no, too fast, too fast. Uh, no. There we are. No, oh, turn around, turn around. Turn around. There we go. There we go. Cool. Cool. Nice. Nice. Come on. Yeah. Racing, 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 racing. Okay, so you get an overhead view, which is uh, reminiscent of Grand Theft Auto. Um, the touch screen isn't really that responsive. Moving around is a little bit cumbersome. It's like the game's being held back by its hardware. But Think about the possibilities in the future, in, in five or six years' time. You could be playing Gran Turismo. What if they've incorporated this technology into the game? You'll not be limited to the courses that come with the game. You'll be able to create your own or race around courses created by other people online. And that is very exciting. Well, that's all we've got time for this week, but remember there's only one week left until this year's Gadget Show Live. But if you haven't got your tickets already, don't fret as there are still a limited amount available for our special preview day on Wednesday, April 7th. Just go to the Gadget Show Live website for more information. Otherwise, you can catch live updates directly from the event right here on the Gadget Show website, including behind the scenes at the Super Theatre Show, coverage of all the exhibitors at the event, the Future Tech Zone and much, much more. And of course, don't forget to tune into the main show this Monday Monday night at 8 on 5 because this week Jason and Otis have the challenge of designing and producing their very own toys using their ultimate gadget knowledge. But from us at Web TV, we'll see you next week directly from Gadget Show Live.